Much like how episode 4 of Tequila and Benetti Real Life was a little bit like the Michael J. Fox, James Woods action comedy The Hard Way, episode 8 is a little bit like another thriller of the time. In the 1989 erotic thriller Sea of Love, Al Pacino played a cop who goes undercover to find a serial killer who picks their victims by using newspaper personal ads. In a perfect match, Tequila and Benetti go undercover to find a serial killer who's using a video dating agency to find their victims. In both cases, they go on dates to get DNA samples from potential suspects. And just like real life, this episode also answers the question of what would this other movie be like if it contained a talking dog. And like the previous episodes of Tequila and Benetti, it'll probably open up with some wacky shenanigans. Like a guy wanting to commit suicide by jumping off the roof. They're all sick of waiting around for the crisis negotiator, and Bonetti must have just seen Lethal Weapon, so he can handle this. Stay back! All right. We're all through it! All right, all right, just calm down now. Uh-oh, pancake time. <laughs> Only with more jokes about the jumper being flattened like a pancake. Don't worry, it says what brought the man up here. What do you want to hear about first? The ten grand I lost in the stock market? My wife's boyfriend? Or the prognosis on my tumor? Damn, let the man jump. Remember in Lethal Weapon when Murtal was all like, ah, just push him off the building rigs. Tequila actually tries to save the guy by biting his pant leg, which makes the situation a lot worse. I got it! <laughs> oh, God! Oops. Tequila, you may have killed two people. Right, oops. But it morphs a little into Lethal Weapon 2, so they land in a swimming pool instead. It's okay, they have the entirety of the opening credit sequence to get dry. Now they can all joke about their fun afternoon. I didn't know they had tag team diving in the Olympics. <laughs> Guys, what if that other jumper, like, drowned? It took so long for Benetti to dry off, he's got hours worth of Garcia flirting to catch up on. Oh, you used the book. On occasion? When? When it's the Kama Sutra, baby, when it's the Kama Sutra. Ha, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Because, fish, bring it on home. <laughs> See, he's also a reader. What more does she want from him? They're soon informed that there's a dead body on the beach. Dang. Well, so much for cocktail weenies. Ah, don't worry, Tequila. It's probably just some bum sleeping it off on the beach or something. Never mind, it's the corpse of someone who was shot point blank in the middle of the head. The more horrifying the case on Tequila and Benetti, the better. Especially when they follow up an image like that with a burrito gag. Tequila! Tequila! <laughs> what ain't in your stomach is fair game, brother. Tequila! You owe me a burrito! Again, I feel like I say this every episode, but you gotta stop leaving your food laying around for tequila to steal. You definitely have no one to blame but yourself. Sam Spade, the corner, is given a little bit more screen time this episode to also flirt with Garcia and give her a cactus. Angela, I was, uh, I was thinking of eating myself for dinner Friday, but I would much rather have you. Okay, so he may also be a serial killer. Sam Spade seems to be sticking with the I don't speak English so good gimmick. You make a video. Yeah. Then you watch other people's videos. Uh -huh. And you pick the one with whom you wish to play hide the what do you call it? What? What do you call it? <laughs> Not buying it. He's one of the few actors on this show who actually is from California. They're informed that the body on the beach is one of two victims whose one thing in common is that they come from a video dating service. And Captain Knight tells them about all of this in the form of a screenplay. Exterior, beach, night. A young couple walks hand in hand along the water's edge. They laugh, they joke. Not only does this pitch have arcs, but it gets more intense. Fury burns in her eyes, her boyfriend tries to back away, but there's no escaping the impending doom. Boom! Boom! He loses consciousness. 
And that's one of the main reasons this episode works so well. It's a Captain Midian Knight-centric episode, and the more we get to spotlight the legendary Charles Rocket, the better. We'll get more into Charles Rocket in a future episode, but rest assured, the spirit of Captain Midian Knight continues to this day. And I'll write a screenplay about all of this! So what makes this a Captain Knight-centric episode? I'll put it to you like this. They're searching for a female serial killer, and Captain Knight just so happens to have started dating Janice, a woman who looks exactly like Glenn Close from Fatal Attraction. He's so into her that how could she not turn out to be evil by the end? Man, I thought I ate with passion. See, he likes her so much, he mouth fucks a granola donut while watching her leave. Now, they probably want you to suspect the head of the video dating agency simply because she looks like a sexy movie Satan, but it can't be her. That's Deborah Pratt, who was not only writer and producer on such shows as Magna P.I. and Quantum Leap, where she was also that show's narrator, but she also served as an executive producer on Tequila and Benetti as well. While checking out Katie Couric's dating tape, a familiar theme happens in all of these videos. I have this beautiful golden retriever. Her name is Shauna. Bring on the Goldie. Oh, he really has to love dogs. Yeah, boy. A lot of people... If you want to go out with me, you better not be allergic to poodles. Hooray, jackpot. Or... This secretly appears to be a dating service for woman dog love. But shock of all shocks, Captain Knight's Janice is one of the clients. Holy granola. <laughs> Not exactly what I was gonna say, but thanks, Tequila. Soon it's even discovered that Captain Knight has a dating tape as well, and he must really be into her if he left out this crucial information. Or maybe he was embarrassed by his tape. I had a dog once. His name was Scruffy. His legs were fused with birth. Believe it. My father said it was something that happened after birth, but my mother explained after birth to me, but I don't think it was the same thing. Okay, at this point, have we ruled out whether or not Captain Knight is the killer? He definitely seems a little embarrassed since he asked Bonetti and Garcia to keep his dating tape a secret. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right, all right, all right, all right. What about him? I'm telling everybody. Captain, he's a dog. Of course he is. Um, <clears throat> I'm just... What? Why did he just act like he knows Tequila can talk? Is that why he was so on board with the psychic and Tale of the Dragon? Has this whole series just been one giant screenplay by Captain Knight? So, since all the clients appear to love dogs, both Tequila and Benetti decide to make a dating tape together, which looks oh, more like an awkward episode of the newlywed game. I'm Nico Benetti, and I'm from Brooklyn. I have tequila. I like poodles, Mexican food, and an occasional brew. Oh, yeah, um, I'm sensitive. Cut! What? what? We get to see a little line of between the characters, and it actually works, because it doesn't go on for five minutes, and there's actually context, because Benetti keeps messing up his lines, which causes them to have to do multiple takes of the dating video he's making. I like golden retrievers, burritos, and getting busy. And I'm very sensitive. Cut. Uh, this is, this is my dog, Tequila. Just call me a New Jack love machine. Oh yeah, I love animals, and uh, I'm a very sensitive guy. So you want to go out with me or what? Cut! What? Captain Knight, however, appears to still be having a great time, but once she kills off Captain Knight, she can move on to her next victim, Al Borland. And odds are, Tequila will get laid far more than Benetti in this episode. Yep. On the first undercover date, Bonetti goes jogging with someone's ass, and this is definitely a double date. What do you say we give our pals a rest and get to know each other better? Uh, that dog did not sound interested at all. Good, he's got the hair sample, so let's move on to... <laughs> to paradise, V. To paradise. Oh, I guess she was interested. She just needed a bush to hide behind first. 
Benetti's second date is with a movie TV vegetarian, which means her not eating meat has made her so angry and stuck up that Benetti just outright pulls a hair out of her head so he can move on. One down, two to go. Hey, don't worry, I got it covered. <laughs> Oh, and Tequila got laid again, and he made it in the front seat for a change. I'm surprised it took till the third date to find a poodle. This time, he's with the eccentric Gigi Rice, who has a creepy ex-boyfriend who follows her, but there's more important things at stake here. Where is he? In the bushes, letting her libido run wild with an ugly brown mutt. This dating service appears to be the best thing to happen to horny dogs and the worst thing to happen to people. Case in point... That's either another victim or the cameraman really wants this show to be cancelled. Stick around, Tequila and I will be right back. Much like in Sea of Love, when Al Pacino begins a fling with potential suspect Ellen Barkin, Captain Knight also doesn't want to believe that his love interest may be a serial killer. Come on, last night's victim was a member of Great Date, and he dated Janice only a month ago. Yeah, and according to the report that I read visiting Detective Benetti, he also went out with the three other suspects. Yeah, and Romeo here got their hair samples and they all came back clean. Except in this case, she is definitely the serial killer. So Captain Knight tries to convince Benetti and Garcia otherwise by inviting them out to dinner. Who are you going to bring? My partner. Well, what about me? I feel so neglected. Tequila, you've gotten laid far more in this episode than Benetti has this entire series. And plus, they bring tequila anyway. And while the night is going well for Captain Knight and Janice, things get dramatic with Benetti and Garcia when Benetti gets real about wondering when Garcia will move on from her deceased husband. Yeah, he wants somebody that's safe. Uh -huh. Somebody's not gonna hurt you again. I got news for you, it's not living. When your husband died, and God rest his soul, he took you with him. And Jack Scalia and Mariska Hargitay are great in this scene. They prove multiple times that they can handle the cheeky, flirtatious dialogue, but they're also more than capable of showing the more dramatic side to these characters. I'll just get a cab. Let me walk you to the door. Daddy, you come near me, and I'll break both your legs. I actually believe she's going to break his legs. You'll need more than a Brooklyn apology for this one. And I also believe that dog can really talk. The episode also works wonders in giving us more Captain Knight backstory. We already know he's a health nut and a struggling screenwriter and is a Vietnam vet, but this episode expands on that. I was the only kid in my entire unit who had parents that were tight enough with the big wigs in Washington to get on the phone and just get me out of there, but oh, I didn't want any part of that. No, sir, I wanted to be there. And now I want the prequel series, Captain Midian Nam. The episode is equal parts serious and hilarious, especially when their previous dates get hung up on tequila. Eco, it's Tammy. Shauna just Not hasn't on. been the same without tequila. Baby, after I rock their world, they never are. Well, you know what they say, once you go tequila, you never go... Vanilla? <laughs> Another perfect night for a piano solo. We've got some hair samples to check out, plus Captain Knight doing his love dance, which was previously seen during the end credits of Run to the Litter, but here has context, suggesting many of these episodes were probably aired out of order. The best, though, is when Gigi Rice is spending the evening with her poodle and reading a book called the Harnessing Your Best Friend. What is going on with the women in this episode wanting to fuck their dogs? Except for the angry vegetarian who is mad at her dog for not having the same diet. The piano solo actually doesn't end with the flashback of him shooting the kid, probably since we know Janice at least didn't kill that person. The next morning, when Benetti makes it up to Garcia, it's actually very sweet. I asked the florist to take off the thorns in case you threw them at me, but uh, she said I probably deserved it. 
case you don't know, that was an apology, Garcia. Captain Knight ends up with a killer, and Benetti can't even end up with Garcia? That hardly seems fair. Although some truth comes to light when Janice's hair samples are tested. It seems he is dating a man. Whoa, 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 what was that? Whoa, oh, hey, you're getting your crying game in my sea of love. Turns out Captain Knight may have provided his own hair as a sample because he really doesn't want Janice to turn out to be evil. The sex must be amazing. They head over to Janice's place, but who knows how they're gonna get inside. Oh yes! Ready, willing, and she knows I'm able. That settles that. So long as the dog goes inside to fuck another dog, that's probable cause. And yes, Tequila does have sex while the other two are looking for clues. And where you been? Call me Lucky in Love. <laughs> right, baby? Oh, no, not again. <laughs> okay, how many puppies does Tequila have at this point? They find various newspaper clippings and also the boots of the killer, but this particular room belongs to Janice's roommate, Victoria, which means Janice may not be the killer after all. That's good, considering how she and Captain Knight's date looks like it will definitely involve watching a Tony Scott movie and listening to some Richard Marks on cassette tape. It's also a little known fact, but Tuna is quite the aphrodisiac. No joke, I really feel like listening to Glenn Fry's No Fun Allowed album right now. And I really feel like getting the neighbor dog laid, so maybe they'll shut the fuck up. The talking dogs on the show shouldn't be going on behind the camera. They're racing to stop Victoria from killing Captain Knight, but first... There's your turn! Uh, I know, I If know. I lose my lunch, it's going in your lap, pizza boy. What's wrong with him? I think he's getting sick. Not my original upholstery, he's not. Somebody give me that sick bag. <laughs> No situation is too dire for some shit jokes involving tequila and the car. Did this episode run short? Tequila belching up a storm and getting sick goes on for a while. And all while being spliced in with deep thoughts by Jack Handy. And seriously, one second we get romance. I always wanted a tall, handsome man with a bizarre sense of humor who's totally out of touch with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got one. And then more of this. Oh, thanks, sweet pea. I feel so much better. Oh. <laughs> you breathe in her direction, please. Romance and burp jokes. There's nothing that this show won't try to put together. Except for maybe Bonetti and Garcia. Knight is so in love with Janice that he proposes to her before he finds out for sure if she's a serial killer. And when Benetti and Garcia show up to warn them about Victoria, a chase ensues when they hear some noise off in the distance. So is this going to be like Sea of Love, where it turns out that the woman who everyone thinks is guilty is actually innocent the entire time? That's not a spoiler for Sea of Love, by the way. The first time the killer makes an appearance in that film, you'll know exactly who it is. I didn't scare you, did I? Yes, as a matter of fact, you scared the hell out of me. But in this case, the killer is Janice. Oh yeah, she did that shit. Turns out Victoria is Janice's Mr. Hyde alter ego who springs into murder mode the second she thinks that someone will break her Janice-side's heart. Who killed those men? <laughs> I had to. I had to keep her from being hurt. They were going to hurt Janice. Just like you. So we all know what's going to happen. The clearly schizo Janice is going to get the medical treatment and the mental health hospitalization that she obviously needs. Drop it, no! Ah! Just kidding. But Eddie shoots her in the fucking chest. And everything appears to go back to normal. Captain Knight returns to reading Variety, and while there is an episode way down the road that addresses his feelings towards this situation, this ending has other things in mind. <gasps> uh oh. <laughs> How'd they get here? They just showed up and they won't go away. <laughs> what is this? 
Okay, as great as it is that these scorned dogs have teamed up together to humiliate Tequila, I mainly love how three dogs come into this station, sit out on the bench, and Terry Funk's first instinct is, oh, well, clearly they must be here to talk to Tequila. But to his credit, they were there for Tequila. There's a perfectly good explanation for all of this. <laughs> really, there is. <laughs> which I better come up with fast. <laughs> Tequila owes them so much child support. Oh, bitches be crazy. While the ending credits remind us of happier times in Captain Knight's life, there are more March of 1992 CBS promos contained on this DVD. The passion, the suspense, of championship skating continues with a dazzling display of artistry and poise. Okay, you may be excited now, but look who's hosting it. That's right, hosted by Kurt Cameron. Yep, that Kurt Cameron. I'm sure Kurt Cameron and a group of figure skaters probably have a lot to talk about. Ugh, let's see if something less awkward is on. Based on the true story, the phone call every family fears. She was attacked this morning and she was raped. One of the few rape victims. Is that that if I went to the police, he would kill the children? Uh, yeah, but what would that TV movie be like with a talking dog? And don't worry, there is another Northern Exposure promo. Good, clean fun. Anybody out there got a cow they want to fling? And God-fearing town folk. Well, I happen to be an atheist. I was admired atheist. I think it takes a lot of faith. Why, there's even a real country doctor. Just some good old God-fearing folk who are probably spending the evening watching Ice Capades with Kirk Cameron. Past the pilot, A Perfect Match is a great episode to get people invested in Tequila and Benetti. Not only are there tons of great goofy side jokes involving a horny tequila, but we get to see a little more drama between Garcia and Benetti, and a whole lot of backstory and character development with Captain Mitty and Knight. And let's not forget that while Tequila is getting his rocks off, there's a dead body with a hole in his head, and Benetti once again blows someone the fuck away. Not to mention, this is also a really good looking episode. Seriously, at times it's flat out gorgeous to look at which could possibly be owed to the episode's director, Virgil Vogel, a 50-year veteran of film and television. Makes sense that you could compare this to Sea of Love, because A Perfect Match is the erotic thriller of the Tequila and Benetti episodes. Coming up next on Tequila and Benetti, Tequila goes back to obedience school, which is run by Mr. Strickland from Back to the Future.